Hey everyone, welcome to Heart for Mission, a podcast from Sacred Heart Seminary. I'm here as your host, Craig Pohl. Uh, actually, this is my first episode that I am hosting. I was interviewed for the last episode last month, but uh, really excited to be the new host of this podcast, which is all about featuring uh, alumnus and faculty and uh, really bringing out what's happening with those who are attending Sacred Heart Seminary or who have attended Sacred Heart Seminary. And so um, I'm actually here with Father Michael Nixon. He is from Panama City, Florida. And uh, he's got an exciting thing going on in ministry, and we're going to break that open in just a little bit, but we're actually going to um, begin with a prayer, as we ought to. And so as this is our uh, the solemnity, solemnity of the Assumption, Assum Annunciation, thank you. Father was ready to correct me. I could see it. No, He's like, no. I'm going to slip in there if, <laughs> if I have to. So this is the solemnity of the Annunciation of the Lord. I'm actually just going to read a prayer that you may have already heard today, but let's just begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh God, who willed that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant we pray that we who confess our Redeemer to God and man, to be God and man, may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, where is that from? Uh, was that uh, was that at Mass this morning? I celebrated Mass this morning, but it was it was. Uh... <laughs> that was it. That was the collect from all right from Mass. I searched all over the internet. Is there a prayer for the Annunciation? And actually, nothing really pops right out at you. You really have to dig and dig and dig. I'm sure there are there are novena novenas and things you can say, but uh, that was really the only one that I could find. So. Anyway, what uh, what I'd like to do is uh, encourage anyone, if throughout this podcast you have any questions or comments, uh, go ahead, put them in the chat box. Make sure that um, uh, we kind of know what uh, what you want to know about Father Nixon or anything that we're talking about, and that way we can address those things. And without further ado, uh, Father Nixon right now is, uh, you're an STL student, right, at Sacred Heart? Yes. Yes, cool. And what year? <clears throat> oh, it's a great, it's a great and complicated question. I, I've got one class left. Um, as as we'll get into, I, I was I was on track to already be finished by now. Uh, but uh, fall of two of two thousand eighteen, October tenth, to be precise, two thousand eighteen, uh, changed a lot of my plans and uh, shifted some priorities uh, for me as a pastor and in my parish year. So I was able to restart this past fall. Um, so so two years later to 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 re up with it. So I'll be back. In Detroit for my final class uh, this summer and, and begin that process of, of writing the thesis and, and everything for my STL and the new evangelization. So yeah, yeah. So I'm 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 a little bit delayed. My my time has been stretched a bit by by uh, circumstances out of my control. So on that note, every student has an excuse for why they haven't gotten <laughs> to something. Yet. What is Absolutely. your excuse? Well, you see, my dog ate all my homework, <laughs> and um, no, so. Uh, uh, for those, I'm, I'm a pastor of St. Dominic Parish in Panama City, Florida, so Northwest Florida. And um, on October 10, 2018, we were wiped out by Hurricane Michael, which is one of the strongest storms to ever make landfall in the United States. As it was was categorized after the storm, after the fact, as a Category Five hurricane. Um, so it's basically, I mean, it's basically for those that, that aren't in hurricane land or, or haven't seen a, a category two, I, I joke, you know, for Floridians, that's like, you know, that's, we, we skip work that day and have drinks on the back porch. You know, that, that's what a category two hurricane is for us. <laughs> um, but, but it, this storm went from a strong two to a four and then a five, like basically within 24 hours. And um, so we were wiped out by that, all the surrounding area, um, prisoners homes and, and most of our major buildings were completely destroyed at the church. The, um, all, none of our buildings were usable afterwards. So it's been uh, an adventure, to say the least, for the past two and a half years in the very slow and, and uh, slow process of rebuilding, but particularly rebuilding towards the mission and seeking to live the mission in the midst of, in the midst of uh, destruction and chaos and everything that we've been through. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. So that's a pretty good excuse, right? That's pretty. pretty that's good okay. For... I'm gonna. I'm just gonna give you a, a pass on this one. So yeah, you, you're good. Um, 
I was trying to finish my master's and all I had to do was write my thesis in order to actually finish. And it literally took me three years to write my, my thesis. And eventually I got a call from Ralph Martin. He says, hey, you're not going to graduate if we don't actually get this done this fall. <laughs> <laughs> Just that beautiful Ralph Martin way, you know, and I'm okay. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to do this now, huh? He's like, yeah, yeah, we, we need to see that. So, okay, finally got buckled down, but I did not have a hurricane as my excuse, but you guys got a double whammy. I mean, just as you're trying to get back on your feet and then all of a sudden the pandemic comes in and right. How, right. how have you been holding up through the pandemic? Yeah. So, uh, we, uh, so following the storm, we eventually got a tent. So none of our buildings were usable, um, including our church, um, it's really just amazing. We started doing uh, food distribution out of our parking lot. We had no buildings, but working with Catholic charities and volunteers, we became uh, one of the, the the main epicenters of of food distribution and aid and 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 uh, in in our area. We're, we're we were already in an area that's pretty economically depressed before the storm. Um, so we were in a tent for two years for mass and everything else, and a big tent, you know, with big giant generators for for uh, heat and and cold and 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 those things. Uh, but a tent is a tent, you know, you're basically sitting outside. So um, we got, so I guess it was Palm Sunday of last year, um, right around this time that we, uh, you know, all the shutdown sort of stuff happened. And we were using, <laughs> using all salvaged equipment. Uh, we've been televising the mass at our parish for the past 40 years. So we were continuing to televise the mass from from the, uh, the tent. And, uh, and so anyway, so everything got shut down and we're having to just continue, you know, to do more televised mass, masses and everything. And uh, right about that time, someone had broken into our, our makeshift bookstore and someone had, and then they'd cut in, come into the tent, and cut the Ethernet cable for our ma our, our our mass. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we'll, we'll put it out to the local t TV and put it out online as well. So anyway, that was a real that was a real like ugh, deflating, uh, deflating. moment. that, that might have been my lowest moment following the storm. But OK, so <laughs> one, one second. I'm sorry. Help yeah, me please, understand please. this. Someone just uh, out of just ill will. I think they, were, they, they were probably trying to steal something. It was it was hooked up to a to a like a rig that had like you know the the computer and other things on. I think they might have thought it was a security line. Who knows? But it, uh, it was okay. it was definitely. I don't think the person was was diabolical, but it was definitely diabolically inspired um, wow. as 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 an event. And uh, actually, wow. I, was, I was speaking with one of my team members, Teresa, who's my director of missionary discipleship. That she called me later on the day because she saw how just like done I was and just like yeah. you know the bottom just had fallen out. And uh, just just words of encouragement about the spiritual battle that we're in and the good things that God is continuing to do. So what's interesting about the pandemic, as frustrating as all that was of not being able to be with our people, is that we kind of felt we were already had already been in it for, you know, the year and a half prior to right. um, all, all this settling in of, of being in disaster mode. Um, so we we're like, man, this is disaster mode, but you can still talk to your family and friends and have Zoom calls and things. That, that's this is kind of easy. You know, obviously we've had people. That have gotten sick and we've had to take all the precautions and those things too so not not putting down the seriousness of, of a pandemic but uh compared to what we had already been through um it was it, it made it easier to deal with um and i think you know anytime you're going through like a, a, a tragedy like this when everyone around you is also kind of going through it too it definitely it helps to make it possible to to, to get through if not uh if not easy or enjoyable at all times wow that's that's really fascinating so um so I'm going to rewind back up before mm -hmm. the hurricane, before the pandemic and all of this. Um, you're the pastor of St. Dominic. Um, you're, you're doing ministry. Uh, you decided you wanted to get your STL in yes. the new evangelization. Um, now, did you decide that while you were pastor or was that before you were made pastor? Yeah. So I was, I was pastor of St. Dominic. I've been pastor now for however many years. Um, and, uh, I feel like I got a pretty big, a, a reset of that on once we got the hurricane, but, uh, but, and evangelization always just been a passion of mine. I was very blessed to, uh, to, for undergraduate, I went to Florida state university, a group of religious brothers, the brotherhood of hope run the campus ministry there. They live relational evangelization. They, it, you know, so it's part of what they're all about and they embody it in such beautiful ways, discipleship, accompaniment, whatever kind of buzzwords you want to use for it. Um, and uh, so I, I kind of had my my deep in conversion. I, I had already, you know, you know, already believed in the Lord, had a relationship with him. But in college, I was able to go a lot deeper into that and then begin to discern from there. So that's always kind of been the backdrop for a lot of my formation and foundation of of my uh, before I was before my vocation, my vocation to the priesthood, even discerning that I would say I already made the difficult decision. I was following Jesus. So um, and then within that, too, that constant desire to 
try to help other people to understand this, try to share this with other people. So seminary is, is kind of an interesting uh, time. I had a great experience in seminary down in South Florida, St. John Vianney and St. St. Vincent de Paul in South Florida. And, um, but you kind of get into that sort of institutional uh, sort of inertia of, of seminary life. And then I was ordained in 2010. So parish life, love my first parish assignment, but recognizing the need for conversion, the need for uh, evangelization and discipleship, just how strong that is. And uh, good preaching and solid catechesis isn't enough as, as much as you'd like it to be, or even personal holiness too, you know, it, it, it isn't enough. You know, those are all key components of the transformation that God wants at, at parish at the parish level. But the more I kind of stepped into my role as a pastor, the more I was recognizing kind of the the cultural transformations that need to happen. Um, the uh, and that kind of comes from every single direction. And then a lot of the people that I was I was reading and engaging with uh, as, as I'm kind of trying to figure this out of how do, how do you renew a parish? How do you uh, take a parish, which I have a great parish that I, I inherited and stepped into. Um, but how do we move the needle towards more intentional uh, discipleship and, and, and more dynamic evangelization. And so many of, of the people that I was reading at the time were, were professors at Sacred Heart. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. Um, so, you know, reading, reading Ralph Martin or, or reading, um, Dr. Mary Healy or, you know, different people like that. And so it was, uh, it was, it was kind of interesting to think, okay, what would it be like to just be able to study this academically, um, in the context of what I'm already doing? Uh, we do a, uh, we have a, a, a studio here on campus as well, St. Dominic Media Production Center. And um, at the time, we were just producing one show, Catholic in America. Uh, then we started this Made for Glory series that I do as well. And now, now uh, Kyle, who heads up the studio, who, who um, uh, does amazing things, he's got seven different things, like kind of all going at once, different shows and podcasts and stuff, um, one in Spanish now as well. So it's some, it's some pretty awesome stuff happening there. Um, but so to be able to take what I was swimming in all the time and then be able to um, take it you know, directly into an academic um, setting and to studying theology in an intensive way uh, really was something I put before my bishop at the time, Bishop Parks. And he uh, was, yeah, he responded um, grateful, grateful for it. And we were able to, uh, to make it happen. And then Bishop uh, Bill Walk, who's, who's my bishop now, um, was able to help, help me continue with that. That's outstanding. Uh, that's no small thing. I mean, I, I know I've uh, known a number of people uh, who have gone through the STL and say it's challenging. It's a lot of work and you really got to focus. And here you are, a pastor of a, of a parish at the same time. Now, how big is your parish? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, so, uh, pre-storm, we were about 1,500 families, which for our area is uh, uh, we're about our diocese to Northwest Florida, different than than other areas of Florida that have a lot more Catholics. We're about 5% Catholic in our diocese. Um, wow. Very, we're in the Bible Belt. We're very Baptist, very uh, uh, non-denominational and other, other um, yeah, other uh, Protestant denominations. But in our area, we're probably about 4% Catholic. So even, even um, uh, uh, less, you know, uh, less of a, of, of a, uh, of a uh, an, an impact, you know, kind of a, a footprint there. So um, I forgot what you were even asking. I'm just kind of, you know, jumping into s statistics there. But <laughs> I don't even know anymore. No, you. Yeah, I was just wondering how how big uh, how big your parish was. Oh so yeah, 1500 so, so families ish. Yeah. So following the storm, it's it's kind of anyone's guess. You know, I mean, yeah. it's been people have had to move for so many different reasons. Uh, being in a tent for so long, some people were unable to attend or we're kind of uh, frightened to attend, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes you've been through a category five hurricane, then you're in a tent when the wind's blowing. It's, 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 it's kind of, it's a little scary at times. So as we've gotten back into the church, we're starting to see more and more people come back, you know, obviously uh, with the pandemic and now more people getting the vaccine and other things too. So it's, it's gonna, it's probably help us get back towards those numbers that we were at before the storm. So you're, you're getting closer to um, coming to the end and completing your STL, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you're just going to be thrilled to not have that yes. hanging over your head. But, um, but there, um, I'm sure are a lot of benefits just from what you've been able to gain from the STL. I'm just curious, what would you say? And I'm totally putting you on the spot because we didn't prep you with these these question and answers. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, what what would you say is your biggest takeaway if you were to just you know, condense it all down and just say, okay, from this STL, this is my big takeaway. And this is how it's, it's going to affect ministry. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's, and I think maybe this is something I've really been coming into this past year in particular is uh, the power of, of, of proclaiming, proclaiming Jesus Christ crucified and risen. I mean, like how powerful that really is. 
And in a sense, how often I, and I as a pastor, I as a priest, I as a person, but I'm a member of the institutional church, have limited that to make it safe. And uh, and I think that in conjunction with the fact of kind of for me losing us losing everything structurally sound uh, here in Panama City has definitely helped me with that too. But in a sense, it kind of it it showcases everything we've been learning about, like what does it mean to actually be open to the Holy Spirit? What does it mean to actually uh, profess Jesus Christ as Lord over your ministry? Um, it's almost you know the ten the tendency can be this is my ministry or my parish or my activity. And um, then I'll kind of like allow God in at the end to, you know, kind of rubber stamp it, but to really uh, to, to make him the purpose behind everything um, is, is really is really life changing. And and it's, it's consistent with everything that we study on an academic theological level, um, studying whether it's scripture or Christology or whatever it might be. Um, but it's so uh, yeah, it's 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 so uncomfortable. It's like a, it's a constant push towards out of a comfort zone and out of uh, just that that uh inertia or of, of you know it's been called maintenance maintenance yeah. mode which i think we, we we thrive in sometimes or not thrive in we we love to exist in let me put it that way yeah and and i do too i like to be comfortable i like a good stasis with things um but the holy spirit obviously praise god for the institutional church and praise god for the structures that, that have been formed but is constantly doing something uh new something new and something that's that's uh they're people that are starving for what we have, um, you know, that are dying for what we have, what, what I received this morning, I received celebrated mass and the, the feast of the Annunciation and, um, and was able to, uh, to receive Jesus, receive the word of God, Jesus, the word of God proclaimed and Jesus, the word made flesh in the Holy Eucharist in the context of a loving community. And uh, to think that so many people don't have that, 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 that has to become an impetus for me. Um, that has to keep me up at night, you know, to, that how can I reach these people um, and share with them the good news? That's awesome. So one of the things that that you're you're doing, and um, I've got just a number of questions about this. I see you've got Saint Dominic Media, which which sounds like this is named after your parish, but uh, it's actually a broader ministry than just your parish. Yes. Tell us a yes. little bit about this. Yeah, absolutely. So this had its its genesis in uh, my twice removed predecessor, Monsignor William Crow. Um, he uh, began televising the mass here at Saint Dominic Parish. Uh, 40, so uh, 40 years ago, we began televising the mass. Um, and so uh, some people are doing this for the first time since the, the coronavirus. We've been doing it for a very long time. And uh, so so out of that, uh, which was for obviously for the shut ins and Catholics who couldn't come, but also for our area, who 40 years ago, a lot of them believe some crazy things about what Catholics did. And um, so to be able to share with them, too, what was going on at mass. And, uh, and then my immediate pre predecessor, Father Pete Zalewski, awesome priest. He, he was a pastor for 15 years. He kind of well, wanted to start developing some more kind of explanatory apologetics videos and things like that to, to accompany those mass um, uh, productions. And so the studio came out of that and eventually a television program called Catholic in America that's now on four, four TV markets. And um, so wow. that uh, so, so Catholic in America was going when I arrived as the associate pastor uh, now eight years ago. And I was, I was here as the associate for a year. And uh, then afterwards, after I became the administrator and then the pastor and then moved towards becoming uh, now uh, the president of, of St. Dominic Media, um, we really helped to try to, to, to bring it towards reaching people online and reaching people beyond those TV markets that, that were involved in. So Kyle O'Connor, who's my very talented um, uh, uh, everything, and you know, producer, producer, director, all sorts of things, uh, creative content person. Uh, for the studio. So he and I working in conjunction, began developing other videos that were much more kind of viral oriented. So Made for Glory came out, um, which is a weekly uh, apologetics video that we do. Um, a Redeemed series, which is about individual persons talking about their conversions. Um, we came back with Catholic in America. Our studio was destroyed like everything else uh, following following the storm. And so we were able to rebuild that and kind of re redo the whole set. So now there's there's actually a couple different sets within within our studio. Um, so back with Catholic in America and kind of revamp the format for that. Um, a couple other things, redeemed series, uh, excuse me, a uh, sent series with our bishop, which is basically about living as apostles in the world, like, you know, uh, living our faith out in the world. So our bishop bill comes over to shoot those. Um, world So Loved, which kind of looks at like a more philosophical uh, foundation of things. Apologetica Catholica, which is a Spanish program that we have um, that's kind, kind of like made for glory, those short, pithy. Um, responses to commonly asked questions, uh, really attractively shot and great. And then a new one that just came out with uh, Father Kevin McEwen uh, called uh, Distilled Faith, 
um, where it's kind of like a live, almost like a live action spiritual direction. They sit and and uh, kind of bring up an, an aspect of faith. And Father Kevin um, is able to kind of walk people through like, you know, praying through a desolation or when you encounter a tragedy or different kind of things, concrete things that the person has gone through and just allow, allow the Lord to speak into that um, while they're sitting there enjoying something, something to drink too. It's distilled faith. So they, they usually have something, something on the bar, the bar stool with them as well. Nice. So anyway, nice. it's, it's, it's kind of amazing when you, I mean, letting a talented person like Kyle who works for me, like uh, just letting, letting him do what he does. And his cool. vision is really, is really incredible. And is reaching a lot of people. Um, so that, that's been pretty awesome to you. I'm, I'm a part of it, but I'm, 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 my face is out in front a lot more than it is me actually doing any hard work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, I mean, here you are, you're, you're getting your STL, you've, you're a pastor and you're, um, you're the president or you said moving in to be the president yeah, or you, I'm the president now. You're yes. the actual president of St. Dominic Media. I mean, that, that is really quite a workload. The Lord has really given you the energy and vision and all this. It's, it's, it's tremendous. Thanks for the tremendous work that you're doing. Oh, man. Well, and it's interesting, too. I mean, I've been reflecting a lot on this. You know, it's only when you list it out that you're like, oh, man, that seems like a lot of stuff. <laughs> but for myself, like what I've been learning so much about leadership as well is if I don't have people around me that are empowered in their giftedness to be able to do stuff that I can't do, you know, the whole, there's that myth of a well-rounded leader. That's, that's, it's, it's there's well-rounded teams, not well, well, yeah. well-rounded leaders. And so being able to have people um, who can challenge me when they need to challenge me and who's, who have gifts that I don't have um, and can allow me to do what I do best is, is really awesome. And so I'll just praise God for the staff that I have at the parish um, um, and then my own leadership team, but also within the studio too. It's, it's, so it's 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 a joy. I mean, it makes it a lot more joyful. It's, it, it's hard. <laughs> it's definitely yeah. hard. But it's it's uh it's it's beautiful to be able to see people doing what they do best and lives being shaped by it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, you just spurred all kinds of things in my mind about <laughs> ministry in general, and and you know um, what we're seeing out here is the team model, team leadership, mm -hmm. and all of that model is really. It really seems like there's no question. This is where God's leading us. And um, like you said, uh, looking at the gifts of each individual and applying those, uh, you know, accordingly to different projects and things. That's that's where our ministry team in the diocesan center has moved. We're much more project based now. And it really does. Uh, it, it makes ministry so much more enjoyable because we're all able to do what we're good at a lot more often. Not that you can just, you know, shove off all the tasks that you're not good at. Sometimes you right. just have to do them. But <laughs> But um, we, we really feel like we're also getting a lot more done. And so, you know, I just had to kind of throw a shout out to the team model because that is yeah, something yeah. that it, we really do feel like the spirit's leading us in. Yeah, ab so, absolutely. So, OK, so you're you're going to be graduating. You're going to um, you're you're going to be, uh, you know, putting that kind of behind. You're going to be applying the, the STL stuff to your ministry. Uh, do you have any big plans? For the future, is there something on sort of on deck, maybe as a result of this whole pandemic or hurricane? Um, what, what's the Lord stirring in your heart for the next move? Yeah, I um, man, there's there's so much just just within with, within my own kind of orbit. We're actually uh, breaking ground. So it's been two and a half years since the storm. So we're breaking ground on our uh, the, the two main buildings that we lost that are just dirt lots right now. Wow. We got back into the church this past October on the two year anniversary of Hurricane Michael. Um, and so we're back in the church rebuilt. Uh, we actually turned the direction of it. A lot, a lot of cool things we were able to do. Um, the shell was intact, basically, but everything else had, had to be shaped wow. and shifted. Um, and then, of course, uh, so the, the religious ed building on our parish hall are gone. So those will be rebuilt wow. into one building along with the gym, too. So that's kind of my main thing right now is is, is working towards towards that. We'll be breaking ground in May. And uh, we, we uh, but continuing to say that it's interesting. The thing that we kept on saying, I kept saying this, we were doing mass outside after the storm. And we have a Marian Grotto. It's just beautiful. We, I did two weddings out there actually after the storm. Um, and that were scheduled and, and, and they still wanted to do it. So we were able to do it there at the uh, outdoors at the grotto, um, is that we, we've lost everything except the mission. You know, the mission continues, the mission of Jesus Christ, the mission that he entrusts to his church and to us as, as, as the local church of St. Dominic parish here. And so to keep living into that, cause it's so tempting to try to just get back to normal, you know? And I think, you know, a lot of us, whether it's pandemic or hurricane or personal tragedies, we can try to do that. Try to, I just want to get back to normal. 
Um, and But instead to ask that question of where is God calling us? How is God calling us to reach people that aren't being reached? And to not just try to rush back to the status quo. Um, so that, that, that's a challenge definitely in, in front of me. Um, I, I would love to see as, as I finally can get into writing the thesis, uh, Dr. Mary Healy, two plus years ago, uh, I'm, I'm putting it on out, online so she'll hear it, um, uh, agreed to direct it. And <laughs> so, uh, so, and uh, that to be about uh, spiritual multiplication, discipleship, you know, that, that like a theological foundation for that. <laughs> so I'm excited to dive more into that theologically. And, um, and then just to keep unfolding that to the parish. I think that's, for me, that's always the most interesting thing, not, not against any other ministry or any other context, but in the parish is, is where people are, are, coming and living and dying and having babies and, and yeah. having, you know, struggles. And it's all, it's all, and most all of it's happening there within. So if, if we can, if we can allow the spirit to do what I think the spirit is moving us to do within the context of the parish, then I think, uh, yeah, we'll continue to see amazing fruit. That's great. So um, as you probably know, this, this podcast is for people who are, are, you know, alumnus or alumni of uh, Sacred Heart, a lot of them are in ministry and all this. So a lot of this is just such good information about, you know, what do we keep as our main focus in whatever work we're doing? Um, before I forget and just kind of go into kind of wrapping things up a little bit, um, where can people go to access the videos that you're working on with St. Dominic Media? Yeah, so you can go to St. Dominic Media, uh, our Facebook page, um, and uh, St. Dominic Media.com. Saint is spelled out S A S A I N T uh, Dominic Media uh, dot com. And um, we have constant, we have, we have videos that are coming out, new, new, new content that's coming out every single week. That's also on all of, um, you know, St. Dominic Media on Spotify or, or, um, Apple podcasts or any of those podcasting apps as well. We put them on audio versions on those too. So yeah, so a, a lot of good stuff that's coming out every single week. Made for Glory is the main main thing that I'm doing weekly. Uh, we have a series right now on, on St. Joseph. So one of those comes out each week. And um, yeah, so uh, St. Dominic Media, there it is, dot com. Awesome. You can see it right there on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, just with the last minute or so, a couple minutes that we have here, um, what, what would you tell someone, um, uh, particularly someone who's working in ministry, uh, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them for how they can be the most effective at carrying out the vocation of missionary discipleship? Absolutely. I think it's, um, you know, p um, people over programs. I mean, people has, you know, that who is, who is the one, who are the one or two or three people that God is calling you to, to pour into, to meet up with on a regular basis. That discipleship relationship is so key that you can be raising them up so that, so we want to be working ourselves out of the job. And I feel sometimes whether as priests or anything else, we kind of, we, we allow ourselves to become bottlenecks and where it all has to keep coming back to us. And and so who are we raising up? Who are we, we investing in intentionally? If the only meetings you have or when people want to meet with you to put out, because some fires come out that you need to put out, um, that's fine. But to be able to be disciplined enough with your schedule and with, with your planning and saying, but I, I'm going to make sure that I have time to meet with people that I need to meet with um, so that I can, I can invest in them. And that's that, 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 that one-to-one -one discipleship I think is so key and so important. It's something we're striving towards. I'm very good in front of groups. I'm very, you know, that that's kind of my thing. Um, but in a sense, that's, you can't, uh, you can't, multi you can't multiply that. You know, you can't be like, Hey, everyone, you should be a speaker like me. Um, because some people have that gift, others don't. Some people have a platform for it, others don't. Um, but everyone can meet with one person. You know, everyone can meet, meet and, and get coffee and pray with. And and so, uh, so yeah, so praying for those opportunities and and being intentional about them as well. Like actually saying like, hey, I'd love to meet with you every other week. And we'll just get coffee and talk about our prayer life and talk about what scriptures we've been reading. And then, you know, so so just something as simple as that, I think, can and does have that long lasting impact. It's tempting to want to have 400 people come to your event, uh, which is good, but it, it might not have had this. It, it, it might change some lives, possibly, but in a sense, it can float on the surface. But if I'm meeting with one person continuously, then then we have the opportunity to, to, to go a lot deeper with it. So I, I would just challenge people towards that. I had a question about academic study as well. I think that's that's the same thing, too, that the, the application for this is always do I have somebody that I'm actually, am I, am I just learning about this because it's interesting? And, and Or do I have someone that I'm, I'm actually walking with and having those conversations with and going there um, in my own heart and their heart? Uh, not as a guru, not as like even their spiritual director or anything, but just just as as a fellow, um, uh, you know, 
disciple someone else who's walking on the road and to help them to go farther. So, and then encouraging them to have someone else that they're pouring into as well. So then it's, then, then that continues to grow. Awesome. Wow. Thanks father. So I see that we're at the end of our time. I feel like I, I could spend a lot more time uh, with you. I really feel uh, like what the spirit's been telling us is, is right in line with what you're saying about the spiritual multiplication, the one-on-one -on -one discipleship, we're right now working on um, how can we actually uh, um, create a structure within parishes that will facilitate one-on-one -on -one discipleship, that mm -hmm. will support that, encourage it, and give it a sort of life of its own for replication and all of this. And I um, feel like I could just talk talk with you about hours about that. So That's exciting. Um, maybe yeah. we'll even pull you back in to kind of update us on how things are going. But um Right now, what I want to do is uh, just kind of wrap this up, let people know that they can access um, the Mosaic uh, from Sacred Heart Major Seminary online at uh, mosaic.shms.edu. And you can see it right there. Um, stay connected with us uh, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I think we're going to have that come up too as well. Awesome. And then um, we're signing people up for spring term. So if you're interested in getting super holy like Father Michael, <laughs> then uh, this is your chance. So, Father, would you be so kind as to send us off with a prayer and a blessing? Absolutely. Lord God, we thank you on this feast of the incarnation uh, that you so love the world that you sent your only begotten son to save us, to suffer and die for us, that we might be raised to new life with him. So we ask that the hands and heart of Mary Immaculate, her mother, and all the angels and saints to pour out your blessing upon us as we enter into Holy Week and enter into the festivities of the Triduum to be moved by the passion, cross, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and be a source of grace and mercy and healing to others. May Almighty God bless and strengthen us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much. God bless everyone. Thanks.